lacrosse community. My name's Ryan Burns. I'm the founder of the Lacrosse Leadership Institute. It's our mission to empower all those that love lacrosse, to utilize the skills you learn from the sport to ultimately live your best life possible. Today, we're so fortunate to be joined by Ken Livenberg, who's made lacrosse his life, grew up in Chicago, and now is making a huge impact in Indiana. Ken, thanks so much for being a part of our conversation today. For those of us on the West Coast that aren't quite sure what you're up to, can you share a little bit with us? How did you get involved in lacrosse and what are you up to now? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ryan, so much. I'm excited to be here. So, um, you know, it's been a long, long journey. It's not something I planned on doing. Um, basically, the way I got started in lacrosse was uh, I was a freshman at New Trier High School up in the north suburbs of Chicago. Saw a meeting for this sport called lacrosse. And, uh, you know, and that was it. I mean, I still feel like I was 15 years old today when I get involved in the sport. And that, that's what set the bug. You know, I was never the greatest player, but I just really enjoyed it. Um, grew up, played for four years there, played and we had a nice summer league. So I play in the summer leagues. Uh, and then I went off to college and I went to a state school called Illinois State. I went there. They did not have a lacrosse team. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'll just play summer leagues. And then honestly, my mom and dad are like, we'll start a team. And I started a team. And to this day, it's still going strong, surprisingly. You know, the first the first year it was me and I'm not not making fun of anybody. I, I played this was in the middle of Illinois um, and it's grown a lot. But it was me and a bunch of guys who were literally off the farm, um, you know, they had the accents and everything, and they they taught me how to read the weather. We're out in the lacrosse fields, like, hey, rain's coming. I'm like, how do you know that? And they're like pointing stuff out. Um, and that that was like what got me started in just starting the team. Um, and then over the years, you know, then we had some kids who finally started. We got a couple guys. I think when I graduated, I went for five years. Um, we might have had like four or five guys that played in high school. So it still wasn't a lot. You know, I still, I don't really keep in touch with them too much, but to this day, now they're getting kids from, you know, they've all played pretty much, which is really great. Um, finished that career, got a degree in occupational safety. So, you know, was doing that in the workforce, uh, which is, if you don't know that, it's like doing inspections for OSHA and insurance companies. And it, it was interesting and fun, but um, long story short, uh, there's a guy, an old friend of mine named Rich Martin. So I want to give a shout out to him, Rich Martin was basically the, the godfather to Chicagoland lacrosse. So it had been there, lacrosse in Chicagoland, at least where I grew up, has been around since the 1970s. But it was four high school teams, uh, two post-collegiate teams, that was it. That's when I graduated, so that's how small it was. This guy, Rich, came in, he came from Connecticut, um, and he just had the vision, like, hey, why don't we build up what we have out east? So. Over the years, I'm doing my full-time job, nine to five. Afterwards, I'd go, Rich is like, hey, we're going to do a clinic here, do a clinic there. So that started off very part-time. Um, and then after maybe, I don't know, I kind of lost track of time, but a few years of doing that, he was like, hey, come work for me full-time. And I'm like, no way. I am not going to leave my regular job to go do lacrosse. And then he just made me an offer I couldn't refuse. And also, I just saw it being grassroots growth. Um, I was like, wow, this really is legitimate. So I made the full-time leap back in Chicago. Um, and at the time, so this was, a, he started a company called Lacrosse America. And it's, there's a Lacrosse America today, but it's not, it's a, he basically sold it to this group. But when we started, it was all just teaching the game. You know, we literally would drive around after our full-time job, we'd go grab a van fill it with gear, go drive around, dump the gear out. You know, this is before coronavirus or all the other stuff. Kids were sharing gear all summer long, but we literally introduced lacrosse to thousands of kids. And when I mean thousands, I mean thousands. Um, we did that every summer. We'd have two, as the company grew, we went from three full-time employees to 10 full-time employees. And then we had 100 volunteers slash part-time. So as the company grew, I kind of came the uh, you know, de facto logistics guy, general manager, whatever you want to call it. I didn't really have an official title. I put, I put an official title on LinkedIn, but I was there organizing everything. So I really got the bug on just organizing things. So I still coached. I did a lot of that, and I would coach the coaches. I'd help the referees. I pretty much did everything from lining fields to – you know, being a babysitter to coaching to running um, programs. And when I left, we had 5,000 kids playing in our program. 
Yeah, I know. Yeah. It was one of the largest organizations in the country at the time. That was, I don't know, about 12 years ago. So a couple, like a year or two after I left, you ended up selling it and then they took it a different direction there. They still do training, but you know, whatever, it's, it's a different company now, but you know, back then, um, you know, there was, there was, and I don't want to, I want to make sure if there's other people watching, there was a small crew of us that were really dedicated. So if I miss any names, there's guys like uh, Jim Weingarten. He was a Rutgers guy who played and moved to Chicago and, and Phil Ryan, another New Yorker that moved out there. And let's see, there's, there's a lot of guys, but there was a small core of us that were really just pounding the pavement, really growing the game. And looking back on it, it's like, man, we, we made a really nice impact and really grew the sport in the area. So that's, that's how I got my, my involvement in lacrosse. And then uh, I moved to Indiana. I, I met my, well, she's my ex-wife. Now I'm jumping kind of up here. Uh, but anyways, I met her. We, and she's from here. We moved here. And my, I kind of, uh, kind of just felt like I run, run its course in the Chicagoland area. I'm like, let's give some, give it a try. So I came here and it's, it hasn't been easy doing it in Indiana. Um, so I have, like I've told you before, I have two, two parts of my company. I have Origins Lacrosse which is very local. It's very grassroots. We keep everything very affordable. Um, you know, like our summer league was hundred dollars for eight weeks, you know, that kind of stuff. And we still give them training and all that good stuff, but I don't, I don't like where lacrosse has gone. I still, you know, I understand where it's going and I understand where it is, but I try to keep the grassroots as much as possible and then still also make a living off this, <laughs> which is getting tough. There's a lot, a lot of people in the, the world these days. Uh, but that, that's how I got involved with it. Um, wow, Ted, love the story and the impact that you guys had in Chicago. And I know you're trying to do the same thing now in Indiana. It's, it's unbelievable to hear the passion, though, and just the excitement that you get from organizing all of this. Do you have a pinnacle lacrosse moment or a couple moments that really stick out in terms of your career, either playing or coaching or doing the admin side of things? You know, as a player, I was pretty average. Um, but, you know, I had a great time. I, I, you know, I think my pinnacle moment was playing post-collegiately um, in Chicago. And it wasn't me, but I was part of a really good club team called Lincoln Park. And we had just tons of great players, all these transplanted East Coast guys, world team players, pro guys. So just going from a guy that barely knew how to catch and throw to playing with these studs, you know, that was kind of my pinnacle moment was being around these guys. Not that I did anything special. I did run the team and I would, I would, uh, I, you know, try to recruit these players, try to get them from other clubs or, or get them, stop them from stealing our guys. Cause we were, we were not known as the best team. We were, we were known as the bottom of the barrel, but by the time I left, we were the best club team around. We were beating the teams that were always smoking us. And uh, it, it was a good feeling. So I'm not saying we were the best, but we, we came a long way, uh, you know, pinnacle moment. I would say I'm going to look back on my Illinois days and the growth of the game. And it wasn't, that moment, it's basically happening now. So I'm seeing guys that grew up in our program. Um, one end up moving to Indiana. He's now moved back to Illinois. He became coach of the year here. He grew up in our programs. Um, another one, and I'll just throw this name out there, and I don't take any credit for him. I did coach him a little bit, but his name is Stephen Brooks. He grew up in our program. He went on to Syracuse, won two national championships, and I just heard he's now one of the coaches for Team USA. Um, he also played for the MLL, PLL, and just see, and then there's another guy, I'll give another shout out, maybe he's watching Greer Hanlon, he started, um, um, he started uh, Charleston Elite, um, and he went on, he played Division One lacrosse at Denver, there's a few, there's many other guys, there's another coach who's at, um, he's now at Bellarmine, he's an assistant, but he's been a head coach to Nick Marks, uh, if he's watching, but all these guys, you know, they were young kids and we kind of just noticed them like, hey, you know what? You're not just some average kid. Like we want to get you involved. And it really paid off. I mean, these guys, I, I have to dig up some old pictures. I mean, they literally were the guys that would sort stinky, smelly gear. And to now watch them as adults just doing incredible things like Stephen Brooks played for Team USA. Greer played professionally as well. Uh, and Nick Marks, I don't know if he played. I think he got recruited. Uh, I don't follow these guys real closely. You know, there's a huge generation gap. So we're not like friends, friends, but we're friendly. And we run into each other every now and then. But there are countless guys that went on. And, and I just love it when they do that. And, and then the guys who maybe didn't play anywhere, but are still coaching. Um, 
And that's the, you know, I'm just kind of doing a little side thing. I don't see that as much anymore these days. And I don't know what it is. The kids are pulled in so many directions, but um, you know, they, at least where I am, the kids kind of, a lot of them burn out after high school. And I don't know if that's that way everywhere. I, th I think it is a lot of places. Um, so I don't see the love and passion. I mean, yes, there's a lot of kids that still love it and are very passionate, but it's not as big of a group, at least that I was around back in the Chicago area. Um, but yeah, that the pinnacle moment is still kind of happening and it's, it's little bites. So I'm not a world team guy. I didn't win any national championships, so I don't have anything like that. Um, I did get a tryout for the Chicago Shamrocks and, uh, and they, they, one guy wanted me, but the head coach didn't. But it, just the experience of that was incredible for me. And that was a box lacrosse. And that's kind of where I end up showing where I could really compete with the big dogs. Like, I was a very average, maybe even below average field player. And I still play. I just play to have fun. But box is what, uh, as a goalie, I, uh, I really kind of found my, myself there. So I love doing that. And I still play a little bit here and there. I'm going to be 54 and, uh, next month. So... You know, my, I still play, but it's especially being in the Midwest, it's hard and hard. And that, around here, there's really – when I do play, I have to play with 18-year-olds and 20-year-olds. So it's it's not easy. Um, I'm still feeling it from my last box game. I was not – I don't play goalie anymore, but I went and hit a kid. and I felt it for two weeks. <laughs> and it wasn't even a big hit. So I'm like, all right, I need to I need to calm down a little bit. But, yeah, to answer if there's no, like, pinnacle moment. But – and it's, it's lots of little moments that, like – this makes this worth it. Like I look back and there's a young man. He's, he's now, he moved here from Illinois here. He now coaches at a, a, a some of the schools locally and just seeing how he's developing these young men. And again, I don't take credit for these guys. They were part of our, of our big system. So there was dozens of coaches that were involved coaching these guys. But the fact that I was part of the, like the leadership team of the whole group that brought these guys in makes me feel pretty proud of them. If that makes sense. I think you should be. The idea that you get players that love the game and ultimately you're able to identify them as key guys and start giving them responsibilities, different tasks, and then they continue to grow within themselves and take more responsibility. And some of them play at the highest level. Some of them are impacting kids at all levels now. It is such a, a neat thing. And for me, that's, that's the epitome of leadership. But I'd like to ask you, Ken, what does leadership mean to you? You know, um, just to inspire people. You know, I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a, I don't sit there and bark a lot. I'm pretty quiet. Um, but just quietly try to inspire people. It might just be to give them a pat on the back. Hey, let's do this next time. Um, you know, giving people, whether it be adults or kids, an opportunity to play this game. Um, you know, the more I learn about the game and the roots of it being a Native American game and being a medicine game, that's where I really focus my energy is like this is a medicine game you know we we don't play this for ourselves we play this for everybody else um and that's where i feel like my kind of calling is now as far as the leadership goes is getting kids to play the game have fun but also teach them like this is not just some average game like there is a lot of responsibility when you play this game you you're you're carrying on you know generations and generations and you're you're responsible for the growth of the game. And I kind of feel like I'm a little bit of a steward of the game, a gatekeeper, you know, per se. And, you know, kind of got a, hey, if someone's doing something wrong, we'll let them know. Or, you know, we've had to kick people out of our program for doing really bad things. But again, it's, you know, if they don't have integrity, they got to go. So, um, and that's that, you know, the tournaments are different. That's the bear paw side of things. But, you know, on the bear paw side of things, it's, again, it's just ins inspiration. You know, I've had, um, uh, I've had some really good players play in my tournaments. Uh, well, I think the most famous one is Dominique Alexander. He plays for the PLL now and MLL. And you know, I only met him once. He came to one of my tournaments with a big, huge smile on his face. And we had this little turn box tournament in Indianapolis. And, you know, I was like, and then years later, I'm like, wow, that guy's really good. I mean, he was good at the time. He came up to me just laughing. He's like, hey, is that MVP trophy for me? I'm like, you just want to give it to me now? And, you know, but no, just giving people an opportunity to, to have fun and inspire, you know, insp inspiration. So, and to have fun. That's, to me, that's leadership. So, I don't I, really I think. I think that's big in terms of leadership. And we, we talk about it often. 
getting the full capability out of others and inspiring them to do more than they thought was possible in the first place. And I think having fun is a big part of that. But you yeah. also hit on the core values, Ken. You talked about integrity. You talked about how the game is so much more than, than just a game. It's a, it's a responsibility of all of us to be able to make sure it moves forward and passing some messages. Can you hit on a few more of the core values that you really focus on with yourself or with your programs when you're leading? Um, just um, in, in spirit, I have to remember, I'm throwing a blank here, but just core values are just integrity, growing the game, you know, in, you know, uh, just realizing that this sport is bigger than you. So you got to uplift. It's a team sport. So you got to make everyone around you better. Um, and even if you know they're going to drop the ball, you know, obviously high level stuff is different. All right. But in the growth part of it, like you just got to make everyone around you better. Um, so, you know, I think that focus on making everyone better is the big thing. And that's what leaders do is they identify opportunities to make others better, give them the opportunity and, and then reinforce it, whether it's positive or, Hey, try doing it this way. It's just saying, Hey, we can get better. Let, let's set a standard that we can all raise to. Yeah. So one, a good example, like for my local programming, I've been doing box here. I'm, I'm the one that brought box to Indiana, Indiana. Um, but we've struggled with numbers over the years. It is what it is. But one of the things I've realized, you know, box, those guys who play, you know, it's awesome because it's organized chaos. But for, for guys who don't have a huge lacrosse IQ, uh, I, it took me a long time to realize. Literally, I just realized this like a month ago. I'm like, I got to do something here. This organized chaos is fun, but it's also just a mess. It's like you're having fun, but no one else is. All right. So I implemented an offensive system in box. And it wasn't like you have to do this, but it was just basically two core principles. Like the guys up top got to fight to the middle. The guys down low are going to set picks. And it was night and day. I mean, all of a sudden, everybody, it only took like two weeks for guys to realize this is legit and it's good. So I'm excited for our next session to see how that, that really grows. And if not, and if it doesn't grow it in numbers, it will still grow the quality of it. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's just, it's always changing and trying to figure out what works. And, you know, what I've learned was everything I did in Illinois doesn't necessarily work here. When I came here, I'm like, oh, I'm going to change the world. When I came to Indiana and I realized pretty quickly I got put in my place, not not by, you know, someone telling me I'm doing bad, but, you know, money speaks. People don't like what you're doing. They don't sign up for it. So I'm like, OK, I am not the end all be all. Not that I came in with that attitude, but I kind of felt really good about doing all the Illinois stuff. And it's been a different story here locally. So but it's still growing. And, um, you know, that's where Bear Paw kind of came into play. Um, with the tournament side and the event side, I'm like, listen, I, Indiana is a pretty small area. I always, my, she's my ex-wife now, but I used to joke like, hey, Indianapolis is a small city. And she's like, no, it's not. I'm like, no, everybody knows your business. I mean, everybody knows everybody. Yeah, it's a big city. I think it's like the sixth or eighth largest city. But coming from the Chicago area, um, you know, the suburbs and then living in Chicago for 20 years, it's a small town, all right? Um, and what works in Chicago definitely doesn't work here. So it's, it's, been, it's, been, a, it's been a nice experiment. Um, so I started doing bear paw lacrosse events to, um, to kind of just generate some more income. I ended up getting divorced from my wife. I'm like, man, now I really got to make some money. We don't have two incomes. So, and that, that's worked well. So I've started to expand and got events going on in three or four states now and hopefully gonna keep growing with that. And I think that's a testament to life. We're, we're going to face adversity. We're going to face challenges. It's how you respond to that, how you're able to rebound and change with the environment. Because like you said, the, where you are now is nothing like Chicago. No. Every part of our life is going to be different because of perspective of others, what's going on, the communities that you're in. And to be able to identify that and then find the, the key figures and figure out how to work around that is a, a big skill. And I think you get it from lacrosse. Because every team you face is going to be completely different. Every time you go to an away game, you're in a different environment. Maybe your offense works one day, but it doesn't work the next. What are you going to do to tweak it to make sure that you can be successful? And if you can do that in a rapid fire environment, in a game or in a season, then once you get to place in life where you're facing similar challenges, you have a little bit of exposure. You have a little bit of a foundation in terms of how you can act quickly on your feet. Oh yeah, and I and I kind of liken that. You know, field is great, and I love field, but box lacrosse. You're you're literally you're not literally, but you're getting punched in the face because there's nowhere to hide, and that's you know 
that's kind of like, that's life. There's nowhere to hide. You got to just get your, do your job. All right. You know, whatever it is, do it. And yeah, absolutely. Sports. That's the beauty of sports. It teaches everybody that. I mean, you, if you stick with it, you realize you're, you're in this, you, you got nowhere to hide. So I, I was never in the military, but I'm assuming it's a little similar. I don't even say close because it's not, but um, that'd be a disservice to our, our servicemen. But I want to say that that kind of environment where you got to adapt on the fly, because we all know whether it be business or sports or military, no plan survives first contact. <laughs> or parenting or parenting you got a great idea but it uh, half the time it doesn't work and what are you going to do you got to have a plan b you got to have a plan c and then you got to be able to improvise on the fly so you know whenever i do my events i'm already you know i've already done the, the brackets for the teams but i've already come up with two or three scenarios just in case somebody backs out last minute which is happening more and more with covid but you know it is what it is so you got to just roll with it yeah, having those contingency plans is, is so great. And Ken, I know we're wrapping up on time here. Are there any last thoughts you'd like to share with us about lacrosse, leadership, or either of your programs? No, I know one of the things you asked me is like kids playing at the next level. So I, you know, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to say anything different than anybody else, but uh, I made a few notes here. Just one, play to have fun. Okay. I've seen so many kids wash out, like I've said over the years, who, you know, I don't want to get into it, but they're pushed in multiple directions and they've kind of get lost in the sauce. They don't realize why they're playing this great sport. Um, and the kids, like some of the ones I mentioned before, they played to have fun. We, you know, they traveled. We did, we did travel stuff, but it wasn't like it was now. And, you know, they, they had great parents who really supported them. That's the other thing. You know, your parents got to support you. Um, if they're pushing you in one direction, it's not going to work. You got to be, you got to let the parents, if you're listening, you got to let your kids be kids, let them make decisions, let them mess up. You, know, you can talk to them afterwards, but, you know, let them figure it out on their own. Um, play multiple sports. You know, that's something I did. I was I went to a giant high school where there went, you know, to this day, they still win state and pretty much everything. So playing, you know, multiple sports at the varsity level was not really going to happen. So, but I played intramural sports. I played sports with friends, pickup games. And that, you know, honestly, that helps you with your footwork. It helps you see the field. Um, you know, in lacrosse, I can't tell you in all sports, you see kids playing there, looking down at the ground, like you have to have your head up. You got to see what's going on. So when I think the more reps you do in other sports, um, the better it is, you know, work on your fundamentals. Too many kids are going to showcases and recruiting events and they're not working on the simplest things. And, and I know this from my box, local box events. We have kids coming from various travel teams and then all of a sudden they're playing against, and we mix our high school kids and adults just because of numbers. And a lot of times they just, they're like, oh no, this is not for me. But what they're really saying is I don't have the skills to keep up. Um, you know, they, they tell me one thing, but it's very obvious. They just get, they get frustrated. They, they're on a you know, travel team. They score a lot of goals. They come to box, which requires a lot more, uh, I won't say a lot more effort, but just a little more savvy, definitely a lot more stick skills. And when they get put in their place, they like, oh man, this is not for me. And, and I'll just lead it with that. Just play box. Like if you're really into lacrosse, you got to play box. Even if it's just for fun and rec, just to see the speed of the game and the small sided fields and the environment. And, the, and there, again, no place to hide. So you're, you're in the game. So, but though that's, yeah, that's kind of it for the, for the younger people. And maybe if there's any parents listening and, and again, I don't think that's anything different than anyone else is saying these days, but I think they need to hear it. So <laughs> Absolutely, Ken. Thank you so much for sharing your perspective on lacrosse and how much you've been involved in the Midwest. It's truly remarkable. And we're so excited to have you a part of our community now. Yes, thank you so much, Ryan. Appreciate it.